Most of the time I get phone calls from people like you moving to San Antonio and you're always asking for no homeowners association and I kind of get it. I understand why. But in this neighborhood that we're covering today, you're going to want this homeowners association. They do so much for the community and the community just absolutely loves them. So today we're taking you to a neighborhood just north of downtown San Antonio where there's so much to do. We're in this beautiful park right here that's, by the way, the oldest park in the United States. So if you want to hear everything there is to know about this neighborhood, we're going to Alta Vista. Stick around because we're getting to it right now. Alta Vista is located just minutes from downtown San Antonio, about three miles north. And we're at the very southern edge of Alta Vista right now, which is San Pedro Park. And there's a natural springs and this is where it begins right here. So when you come to San Antonio, this is a must. Like you have to come out here and take a look at this. And there's also this ginormous pool where you and your kids can come and just have a good old time in this hot summer heat. Uh, if that's not your thing, there's tennis courts and there's also a playhouse on the premises. So this playhouse caters to the artistic vibe of San Antonio and mainly Alta Vista. Other things that you'll find real close to here is just downtown San Antonio, like North Star Mall, or, uh, you know, just everything that you can possibly think of is right here. If you live in Alta Vista, you're not going to be disappointed. Hi, my name is Jesse Lopez. I'm the owner of Blue Utopia Realty. I'm a real estate agent that helps people just like you when they're moving to San Antonio, especially if you've never been here. Like I don't just find you a home. I find something that fits your lifestyle. So if you want to know everything there is to know about eating, sleeping, living, playing, and just enjoying San Antonio, you definitely have to hit the subscribe button and tap on the bell to be notified every time I put out a new video. I put out so many videos of different neighborhoods and I don't just talk about the neighborhoods. I take you out to the neighborhood like we are right now today in Alta Vista. So if that's important to you and you want help when you're moving to San Antonio to find the perfect place for you and your family, do me a favor. Give me a call. There's a QR code right here. Stop the TV, scan that QR code, book an appointment so we can find out where the best place for you to live in San Antonio is. So getting back to Alta Vista, what's What's the big deal of Alta Vista? Well, it's in an old established neighborhood. And, you know, one of the things that I liked about Alta Vista is that they kept the integrity of the homes. So when we get into the truck and we start driving the neighborhood, you're going to see that a lot of these homes just look like large homes. But in order to accommodate for affordability and for people to live in such a nice neighborhood, a lot of the owners have taken the homes and split them up into duplexes, into fourplexes, uh, into apartments. And so if you're an investor and you're thinking about investing in San Antonio, I'm telling you, if you invest in Alta Vista, you can't go wrong because people want to live there. And part of the reason they want to live there is because of the homeowners association. Now, the homeowners association is bonkers, right? Like I said in the beginning of the video, most people don't want a homeowners association. But imagine this, your homeowners association ends up actually doing events for uh, all the people that live in the community. There's something called Porch Fest. And during Porch Fest, basically what happens is people get on their on their front porches and they'll play music. And of course, all the neighbors will come and they'll put their lawn chairs out and they'll actually enjoy the music. So it's a very big sense of community uh, that people have here in Alta Vista. You won't be disappointed. Among that, there's also other things that they do. They do cookouts. They do, you know, very community minded. So this is a homeowners association you're going to just want to embrace because they do so much for the community. I read that this one family had just moved in and right after they moved in was Porch Fest and they got to meet their neighbors. It was such good fun and uh, they just got to meet everybody that was around there. So that's one of the things that's good about Alta Vista. What else is good about Alta Vista? Well, it's proximity to everything, right? On the west side of the community, you have IH10, which will take you from downtown San Antonio all the way to the hill country, uh, including places like shopping like La Cantera or the Rim 
or even Fiesta, Texas, which is Six Flags. And on the east side of the community, you have US Highway 281. Again, coming from downtown San Antonio, going north, you're gonna end up in Stone Oak, uh, Bow Verde, and also the Hill Country. So you have really big access to anywhere you wanna go in San Antonio when you live in Alta Vista. Now, the neighborhood itself doesn't have a lot of amenities, but there is one restaurant just smack in the community. It has a, such a good vibe. The the eastern sector of the neighborhood is on Broadway Street, which we're going to drive down in a little bit. There's these nice restaurants right along Broadway Street that you can go and just walk from your home to have dinner, have a glass of wine, and just have a good time. On the western perimeter, the neighborhood is um, bordered by a railroad track. So if you don't like railroad tracks and you don't like the sound of trains, which we were just listening to them a minute ago, uh, it might not be the place for you to live. But despite that, it's a great neighborhood, lots of things to do. It's in close proximity to a whole bunch of things. So you won't be disappointed. And to boot, you have an HOA that you're just gonna love. So we're here in San Pedro Park, which is on the southernmost part of the neighborhood. And there's a natural spring, like you could see it right here behind me, uh, that in San Antonio, actually, the entire basin, this area that we're standing in, used to be a bunch of springs, but there's a, a higher demand from back then, right? And we're talking about when Native Americans lived here before this was actually Texas or even the United States, but the springs were all over and that's why everybody congregated here and actually lived in San Antonio. And, uh, but as the city grew, so did the demand for water. So a lot of these springs like this one right here have dried up. They didn't dry up, they actually just uh, receded. So they're under the ground level into what we have, uh, we call Edwards Aquifer. And that's where we get our water supply from. But there's just so many things that you could do here in San Pedro Park, which again is the oldest park in the United States. Uh, there's, you know, walking paths, there's picnic, tables, barbecue pits. You can come out here. A lot of people like to visit during Easter. They'll stake a claim of the park and they'll have their Easter festivities here. If you're not into that, uh, I mentioned there's some tennis courts. So there's a whole bunch of tennis courts. You could play tennis and then they have the theater house. The theater house is more to promote the artistic view of San Antonio. And uh, there's actually another place that's in, in the neighborhood that has studios. I think it was about 54 studios. So if you're an artist and you like to paint or you like to do art artistry with mixed media, that's gonna be a good place for you to look at. And we'll swing by there and show you where that's at. But the uh, Playhouse is where they have plays again to promote theater and uh, you know that kind of stuff so if you like food if you like walkability if you like a peaceful neighborhood that's also great so let's go ahead and jump in the truck i want to show you some of the neighborhood and then talk a little bit about the homes talk about the schools crime and all that other stuff that you're here to see all right again if you have any questions please drop a comment below ask away i'd love to answer your questions and again if you want to do a consultation either hit the qr code here or or call me on this phone number right here. All right, let's go ahead and jump in the truck and go take a look at the neighborhood. All right, guys, so we're in the truck. We're gonna head on out to, to the neighborhood. So we're pulling out, we're, like I said, on the southern edge of the neighborhood. And uh, as you can tell right here to the left-hand side, there's some apartment complexes. So if you wanna live in an apartment complex, uh, I think the average rent was anywhere from $1,000 to like $2,000. And we're talking about probably smaller uh, apartments or smaller, you know, efficiency type, one bedroom, two bedrooms. You're probably not gonna find anything too much, too much bigger than that. But um, there's definitely options. So if you don't wanna buy a house, that's cool. You can actually do that. Another thing I wanna mention is that as we drive along, you're gonna see that there's some homes that are fixed up. Like for instance, right here to my left, there's a craftsman style house right there that was fixed up. That's a multi-family. Uh, you're gonna find some that are fixed up, but then you're gonna find some that need some, they need repair. And again, I've said this in other videos that that's like an opportunity to me. Like if you don't mind rolling up your sleeves and, and getting a little dirty, <clears throat> you could pick up one of these homes at a reduced price and do the work. So. It's a, it's a win-win in my opinion. But take a look at these homes right here. So this one right here that uh, we're passing by right now, that one is part of the San Antonio College and it's like a fraternity uh, or sorority, one of the two that live there. So it's a big house. 
Um, and that's another thing that if you're from out of town and you have a child that's coming to school here or you want somebody to, you know, if you live in town but you want them to go to school here, you're going to uh, have that opportunity to house them in one of these uh, rental properties so they can go to school. They're away from the family, not away from the family, but they're away from the house. You know, they're living on their own and so forth. Uh, right now we're gonna hit San Pedro. We're gonna make a left-hand turn here. And this is the uh, the eastern border of the neighborhood. So we'll take a look at some things here. There's this restaurant called Scratch. It's a really good restaurant uh, for brunch. You know, come out here, have a mimosa, have, you know, some good, some good uh, eats. It's really nice. But uh, we're gonna go all the way down San Pedro so you see kind of the commercial side or the outskirts of the neighborhood. And then we'll go into the actual neighborhood. So, you know, you have law offices, you have uh, medical places and all kinds of stuff. There's just billiards. I've never been in it, but it's called Bananas Billiards. I've heard a lot of great things about that. There's a food court right there, or not food court, food trucks. Uh, there's a school right here. It's Mark Twain Elementary School. So speaking of the schools, the public schools in this neighborhood are not the best. They're rated about C, C minus, but there's an, a bunch of other schools that are around here that are Christian schools or Catholic schools. So basically private schools that you could put your children into that are A rated. Um, so there, there's not a worry for that. Or if you homeschool, or maybe you don't even have children, I don't know. But yeah, the, the elementary school is Mark Twain. The high school is Edison High School. And the middle school is Beacon Hill. So look, again, apartment complexes. So there's opportunities to live in apartments here. Uh, and then we're gonna drive into a neighborhood in a minute. Now in the Northern part of the neighborhood is this restaurant called Mr. Juicy. So they serve uh, hamburgers. And they also, if you're familiar with Dole Whip, uh, we, we learned about Dole Whip in Hawaii. And it's basically uh, pineapple, like a pan pineapple smoothie or a frosty. So they sell those here. I think it's the only place I've seen in San Antonio that sells Dole Whip. But again, this is a commercial side. Uh, you see a lot of apartment complexes. We're gonna drive into the neighborhood here in a second. We're gonna make another left on the, the traffic light, which is Hildebrandt, which is a Northern border of the neighborhood. And then we'll drive into the actual neighborhood so I can show you the homes. So if you keep going down San Pedro, which is the street we're on, if you keep going north, you're gonna hit North Star Mall, and then you hit Highway 281, which will take you north into Stone Oak, into the very northern parts of San Antonio, and then into the hill country. But as you can see, you, know, you have Walgreens, you have you know Bank of America, there's a Taco Cabana right here to my, to my left, and then Mr. Juicy is right here on the, on the left-hand side. You know what, I, I'm gonna have to cross the tracks, but I don't want to. So I'm gonna have to just turn around. We're gonna go through Mr. Juicy's parking lot and then go back into the neighborhood because I missed my turn. All right, so we're gonna turn right here and go into the neighborhood and uh, take a look at some of these homes. So as we drive into the neighborhood, you can tell that these homes are older. They were built in the, about the 1920s, so the mid 1920s. So there's a lot of older homes here, but a lot of these were have been renovated and you can tell the ones that have been renovated and the ones that have, haven't been renovated. But again, like I said, there's opportunity. Uh, I'm gonna make a right right here. Well, I'm not gonna make a right. I'm gonna go straight because there's nothing to go. All right, so as you can tell, a lot of these homes are older, uh, but they're they kept their same the same look, and some of these are actually multifamily, so they're either duplexes or they're fourplexes, but they kept them looking the same. Like that one right there needs some work, so that would be something that I call an opportunity where you can actually uh, buy it, renovate it, and then the the value of the home would actually increase. So there's one main street in this neighborhood that I like, and it's Woodlawn Avenue. 
and we're gonna drive by it and it just it's so cool because it's it's got a median and then it's got like these palm trees in the middle and then the homes on on both sides of the road are pretty big and uh they're like something that you have to reckon with right like they're actually really big homes uh, that's one of my favorite streets in this neighborhood and woodlawn actually extends all the way to woodlawn lake which there's another video that i i made uh that covers woodlawn lake but uh i'll put the link on that one like right here All right, so we're driving down the side street. So let's let's jump into the actual frontage of the street so you can see. And then you'll be able to tell how some of these homes are single family and some of them are multifamily because they're just larger. So the larger ones are multifamily and they did that just, you know, so it's affordable for people to live here. Like this one right here to our left. That is, uh, those are definitely multifamily homes right there. But there's some little quaint homes that are single family that you can tell it's just one family living there. And uh, that's a multifamily right there. Other things that I like about this neighborhood is that they're, you know, the trees are mature, you know, the neighborhoods are established, people know each other. And like I mentioned in my, in the previous part of the video, that the homeowners association actually does things with their neighbors where they they do uh you know community events they do the the porch the porch fest where people sit on their porch they play instruments or you know bands play music and the neighbors pull up their lawn chairs and they enjoy the music they enjoy you know the the um the camaraderie of the neighborhood and i mean you can't ask for more in a neighborhood most neighborhoods in san Antonio are not like this uh, except for one that's a neighboring one, it's called Beacon Hill, and we'll do a video on Beacon Hill at some other day. So I mentioned that the railroad tracks borders on the western part of the neighborhood, and you can see right there in front of us that's the railroad tracks. So if you don't like railroad or trains coming by, that might be something you consider. Now with an older established neighborhood like this, you're gonna have more sense of community with the, you know, the the um, the HOA being so active in this community, you're gonna have lower crime. So on the crime, on the crime front, there's, uh, I guess, medium crime. If you're to rate it from zero to 10, the crime rate is about a four. And, you know, when we pull these crime stats, we do pull them from established, um research part third parties and uh it's not always the same so a lot of times i i, I reference a certain source but this time i think it's niche.com that rated it a four out of ten but it just gives you an idea still it's it's below uh below the midpoint it's probably right on par with the national average which is four which here's the the middle or the mark twain elementary school which is uh, which is a four um, out of ten, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the crime rate here. We're almost going to touch every single road. That's how small this neighborhood is. Now the good thing is, is a lot of the neighborhoods that I cover that are large, or that are that have nice homes like these, they're pretty expensive and people you know, uh, make more money. So the average income for per family here is about $63,000. The homes, you're gonna find homes anywhere between $300,000 and $600,000. So if that's within your budget and you like, you know, a community that, that is really put together and uh, is, you know, has a sense of community, if you would, this would be a perfect fit for you. Here's some more multifamily homes. You can tell the larger ones are multifamily. Go down this street. So 
So you have some craftsman home, you have some colonial homes, you know, you have ranch style homes, traditional. So it's a hodgepodge. It's not, and that's what I like about older communities. And I've, I've said this in my videos before, is the the different, you know, the different aesthetics of the neighborhood, the, the homes, they're not cookie cutter. They don't look like, you know, your neighbor's house. They're not all the same. That's, to me, that's a, the allure of an older neighborhood. I love craftsman homes. Mine is not a craftsman home. Mine's a cottage home, which is very small. But here we are, we're on Woodlawn. So I'm gonna go up Woodlawn and then turn around so you can see what I'm talking about. It is a very small stretch of woodlawn, but you'll get the you'll get the idea. Another thing that's good about this neighborhood is that uh, you have so many things that are at your at your doorstep, right? You have a restaurant right in the middle of the neighborhood. You have a, uh, we're gonna drive by that restaurant. You have San Pedro Park, which is on the uh, uh, southern edge of the neighborhood. And then you have just walkability towards places like um, the the Pearl District and downtown. Uh, there's this cool little spot that we like to go to that's not too far from here. It's called The Cove. So The Cove is a, you know, it's an eatery but it also they have live bands they have uh, like about 100 beers on tap and they have a playground right in the middle and you know while you're there enjoying the music and enjoying the food if you have a child uh, you know smaller child they can go and play on the swing set while you're you know having adult time if you would but here's the the restaurant that i'm telling you about in the neighborhood it's a little little restaurant right here it's called the Outlaw. So here's some more of the, the larger homes. And these are nice. These, you can tell they've been renovated. They've had some work. Some of them have, that one has not. But those are great opportunities if you don't mind putting the money and investing into them. And then I mentioned about investors. If you're an investor and you want to, you know, buy one of these homes and make it into a multiplex, you know, a fourplex, you definitely have that option. So here's some apartments right to our left plenty of apartments to live in. Uh, the majority of the homes that are in this neighborhood are owned by the, the homeowner. So they they occupy them there, uh, except for the the rentals, the multi multiplexes. But yeah, again, lots of opportunities to live here. Uh, great accessibility. You have I-10, you have 281, you have downtown to the south, and then you have these amenities like the park that you can go to you know, play tennis, you, you have the the um, playhouse, and then you have San Antonio College right next to it. So there's a pretty nice place to live. We're gonna go around the park itself so you can see it, because even though we were in the park, you didn't actually get to see the park. So you may be wondering, what do your neighbors look like, right? So the median age of somebody living in this neighborhood is about 40 years old, and about 23% are going to be um, over, or excuse me, under 18 years old. So you have a good mix of family, 
and about 18% are over the age of 65. So it's kind of the same. And I point that out just to give you an idea of who lives here, because, you know, you always want to know like who, what the families look like. And I'm just going to say it looks like a normal family, like most of the neighborhoods in San Antonio. I mean, those ages do range. Typically, the more expensive neighborhoods, the age is a little bit younger, like in their 30s. Um, but it can also be a neighborhood like I did on Halotis, which is right here. Uh, I did that video and the median age was a lot more because it was more of a retirement community. But no matter what, I mean, this this neighborhood lends to to family life, uh, to to single people, because I actually had a cousin that used to live in this neighborhood that lived in an apartment. He was single. So if you're looking for walkability, if you're looking for a close knit community, uh, neighbors that like each other and take care of the neighborhood, then this is definitely a good place for you to consider while you're moving here. If that's not the kind of place you want, then do me a favor. Uh, give me a call, you know, send me a text, send me an email uh, so we can get together so I can kind of guide you in the type of neighborhood that you are looking for. Uh, that's easy, right? So we can find the home. We got to find the right neighborhood for you. Uh, if you have any comments about this neighborhood, maybe you live here or maybe you've come through here and you just want people to know something about this neighborhood, just leave your comments below. I, I love listening to them. I love engagement. I love talking to you and uh, getting your perspective. But um, yeah, so this is, this is a really nice neighborhood, no matter what your budget is, no matter what your lifestyle is, well, the lifestyle does depend because there's more walkability, you know, sense of community and all that good stuff. But yeah, this is a, a great neighborhood to live in. And it won't break the bank. From three to 600,000, that's pretty good price range. So overall, Alta Vista is a really nice neighborhood. As far as affordability goes, it's very affordable. Like I mentioned, anywhere from three to $600,000, you can actually buy a home here. Or if you're looking to rent, anywhere from a thousand to you know right under $1,500, somewhere around there. Um, there's not a lot of entertainment within the community, but if you go on the outskirts of the community, you'll definitely find some some bars and some nice restaurants where you can have a glass of wine, some you know good eats and all that stuff. You have uh, San Pedro Springs Park, which is great for entertaining yourself. You can go to the swimming pool, you can come walk, jog, all that. The schools, well, there was some stuff to be desired on the schools, but overall, Alta Vista is a really nice neighborhood. And I think that uh, people like to live here because of the sense of community. Their neighborhood association is very involved. They do a lot of good things with them. So that's good as well. Now, the overall picture on the market as far as uh, real estate goes here in Alta Vista, everything in San Antonio has been holding steady. In just the last few months, we've seen a, a little dip, a little decline in pricing, which is a great time to actually buy a home. So if you're thinking about moving to San Antonio, you think Alta Vista is a great neighborhood for you, then give me a call. You know, send me a, an email, a text, you know, smoke signal. I'll answer them all. I have your back when moving to San Antonio. If you want to know more about other neighborhoods in San Antonio, just take a look at these other videos here. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe and tap on that bell so you're notified every time we put out a new video. Till next time, we'll see you on the next one.